Hey, I'm ZSH Plays, and today I'm going to show you how to build beautiful habitats for any animal in Planet Zoo. So whether you want to build in a tropical theme or an Australian theme, from Amazonian rivers to African forest, I'm going to give you the tools to do just that. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that using something very exciting I've just released today, building kits. In the description, there's a link to a Steam collection where you can download a set of kits that enables you to build in pretty much any theme you like using pieces that I've created. Habitat barriers, fences, viewing windows, foliage, it's all here. And if you only have the base game, don't worry, I've got a special kit just for you. Hit the link and it will take you to the building kits collection, then hit subscribe to all and they'll be available in Planet Zoo for you to use. So what are we doing today? Today we're going to be building an Australian habitat for an animal I've never built for before, exclusively using these building kits. Let's go! Alright, so this is the Australian building kit, appropriate enough, and I'm going to build a habitat for the dingo using just this kit and some foliage and stuff like that. I've not planned this, so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we can get a really nice habitat together for this. I've chosen the dingo because it's one of the few animals I've never built for before. I was going to build for them in San Bernardino Zoo, but their spot got stolen by the Tasmanian Devil. And I got quite a few comments wondering where the dingoes were, so I've decided to build a habitat for them today instead. I've worked out how big the habitat needs to be and put some null barriers in just roughly. And now what we're going to do is dig a trench along the front of the habitat, which is what's going to keep the dingoes in. This habitat is based on a real habitat at Taronga Zoo in Sydney and the dingoes live on a sort of island in the middle of the habitat which is what we're creating here just by digging down into the terrain and then using the flatten to terrain brush. So let's get into the building kit. This is a sort of tiny version of Uluru which I built for the kangaroo habitat in San Bernardino Zoo and we're going to be using this for two different things in this habitat. Firstly we're going to copy it, strip the foliage off it and use it as a set of rocks and we can use it to line the trench that we just dug. So if we move it down here and then we can sink it down into the ground, get it into the right place and we're going to have these rocks so they're just sort of poking out through the terrain that we dug down into. I try not to leave any terrain that's had a lot of work done to it showing in the builds because it doesn't look that realistic. You can see all the sort of sharp edges on it. So we're going to use these rocks to get a much more natural look. So. It'll take a bit of fiddling around with, but once we've rotated it into place, uh, we'll probably move a few individual rocks as well, just to make sure everything lines up. This is already starting to look much better. I want this to go all the way around the trench that we dug so that none of that is visible. That's pretty much the right place, I think. We'll put it down there and then we'll start moving a few individual rocks just to make sure that the dingo side of the trench is far enough away from the guest side of the trench so the dingoes don't start jumping out and we'll be lining the guest side of it with the glass viewing windows all the way down later on as well so there's a really good view of the dingoes that's how they've got it in Taronga Zoo I think it works really nicely so this is looking good we're going to cut the end off it and now we've got a nice group that we can just copy down this trench and um, we'll just make little adjustments each time so it's not exactly the same it doesn't look too copy pasted the rocks are stretching a lot further back into the habitat than they need to at the moment but don't worry about that we'll sort that out in a second so that's the last piece um, and then well just one more for the corner here and then what we're going to do is join all of these into one group so it's easier to work with and then we can go up and select all the rocks at the top that we don't need and we can just delete those so we'll get rid of those now we've got this nice arrangement at the front and then we'll just copy a couple more bits in to cover up where the trench joins on to the back of the habitat. Now we're going to grab Uluru again and this time we're going to use it for more of its intended purpose really so we'll leave the trees on there and we're going to use this to create the back of the habitat. So we're going to have a really impressive Australian looking rock wall at the back. I love the orange rocks and the orange sand on these Australian maps. It just looks so good. So we'll move this rock down here so it's almost but not quite touching that habitat gate. We're going to come back and do some detail work on the habitat gate later. And then again, we'll copy this across. And we'll do a bit more work with the rotation this time. To make it look natural, this is going to be much more obvious than the, the rocks down in the ditch. So we'll get some different angles going on here. Uh, just keep playing around with it until we're happy with it. But basically, we've only used one piece so far and the habitat is starting to come together. We'll just copy this one along to here as well, maybe adjust the height. And there we go, starting to get the looks of a habitat here. I think we use one more of these as well, just to block out the view here. This habitat's just sat on its own in the middle of one of the Australian maps. So we want the edges of the habitat to sort of block out the view of the empty map behind it. Move a couple of those trees around as well. And then we'll just chop the end off this piece so that we can get to the habitat gate. Once we've done that, it's time to start on the terrain work. So there we go, we'll get rid of that. And then we're going to get the roughened terrain tool, get a nice big brush, 
get it down to about 30%, and then we're just gonna run this over the whole habitat to get some interesting terrain in there. And then we'll switch to the smooth tool and do it again so we get rid of any really jagged angles or anything that looks unrealistic. And finally, we'll use the flatten to terrain tool to start working on the terrain that the game's created for us and just get it looking exactly the way that we want it. Make sure there's no sort of hollows or dips where the dingoes can't be seen, so that's not gonna be great for the guests. And speaking of the guests, it's time to get the guest viewing in. So we're gonna get rid of those rough null barriers that we just put down in the first place and get some glass barriers across here so that we can actually use them for the guests to see the dingoes through. So we'll place these down here, making sure that we don't go over the edge of the trench that we dug and get a nice straight line here. And then we're gonna take one of the Australian walls from the Australia building kit and use that to decorate these viewing windows. So we'll take this wall and move it so that it's exactly between these posts. The wall's four meters long. I've done the fences four meters long, so everything will line up perfectly. And we want the glass to be sort of exactly in the middle. We don't want it to be that high though, so we're gonna sink it down so that it looks good like this. And then if you want these dot motifs, we're gonna go in and select the dots and then move the dots back up above the terrain again so we can have that. Obviously they're optional. If you don't like those, uh, you don't need to use them. And then we'll take this fence post as well and use this to cover up the um, default joins between the glass panes. We'll spin this one round so that they don't both look identical. And once it's in the right place, we can turn this into a group and we've got a really nice guest viewing window. Obviously you know what's gonna happen next. So we're gonna take this and then copy it all the way down the glass so that we've got one big long viewing window so the guests get really good views of the dingo. I think this habitat's quite a bit bigger than the one at Taronga Zoo or, or from the reference photos that I've seen anyway, but that's uh, Planet Zoo for you. I've built it so that it would work in franchise mode. If you're in sandbox mode, you can uh, you can have a much smaller habitat if you like. We'll move this set of rocks to provide a satisfying end to the glass barriers. And there you go, this habitat is starting to look really nice already. There's one problem though, look at the state of that glass. It's time to get the staff buildings in so we can get a mechanic in to fix the glass. Uh, although obviously you could always turn that off since so we're in sandbox mode. Uh, but we also need trade center, keeper hut and staff room so that we can get the dingoes in later. We use the null paths so that we can just get some invisible paths in here. Don't need anything too fancy hidden away behind the habitat. We'll put some steel mesh in there to finish off the habitat gate, get our mechanic to fix the barriers and then it's onto the foliage. We've got this rock art garden in the Australia building kit. So we're gonna take some foliage from the garden. It's all desert themed and we can get a group of that and put this throughout the habitat, start bringing it to life. We won't use too much, these bushes are pretty sizable, but certainly around the back of the habitat, this is really gonna break things up. And then we're gonna do some terrain painting. Now terrain painting is one of the most vital parts of a build for me. So what we're gonna do is use all different kinds of sand and dirt throughout the habitat, get some rock in the raised areas, and that makes a massive difference to how it looks. Next up, we're gonna take this Australia sign from the top of the rock garden and put this on top of the rocks at the back of the habitat. Real sort of statement sign. When we've just got one habitat on its own like this, I think that's really appropriate. I use this at the entrance of the Australian area at San Bernardino Zoo. I really like how it looks and I think this will go nicely into any Australian area. The dot work you see on this sign and on the fence that we used as well is based on Aboriginal artwork. I think it ties the area together really nicely. We're gonna drop a large ghost gum tree in there and then put in one of the water pools for the dingoes. If you're ever building for an animal and this is one of the options for them, always use it because the animations are incredible. And then it's on to the grass, which is where we're really gonna make this habitat come to life. When we're adding grass to a habitat, we wanna make sure that a line to surface is turned off and random rotation is turned on, and that will enable us to put it in in the most effective way. So we'll just drop one in, burying it slightly in the ground, and once it's in there, we will select it, hit Control D to duplicate it, spin it round with Z, and then pop it somewhere else. And then once we put this one down, every time we click, it's gonna randomly rotate it, and then making sure it's always slightly sunk into the ground so you don't sort of see the, the circular pattern that each um, grass piece has. You can then just place this throughout the habitat, maybe a bit higher in some places, maybe a bit lower in other places, however you wanna do it. But really quickly, you can bring the whole habitat to life with this stuff. Making habitats look good is so much easier since the buffalo grass was added into the game. Even if we're in franchise mode, and this is an Australian animal uh, with American grass, it's only gonna reduce their happiness by about 1%. So you can use it pretty much any way you like. 
This is looking really good now, but if there's one thing that animals in Australia need, it is shade, and we are lacking in shade at the moment. Now, there's no sunshade in the Australia building kit, but if we bring in the African building kit, then we've got this sunshade here that's actually made with pieces from the Oceania pack, so it's very appropriate. We're going to drop down a piece of path here so it doesn't destroy the train when we put it down, put it into the habitat, and then we'll delete the piece of path and then shrink it down. I built this for rhinos originally, so we need it to be a little bit lower for dingoes. And then we'll put another one in on the other side so the dingoes aren't fighting over who gets to go under the umbrella. And with one more of these in here, I think that's the shade situation sorted. Each of these building kits requires varying levels of DLC, but if you don't have any DLCs, don't worry, the base game building kit doesn't need any, and it features a lot of the pieces from the other kits that I've customized to get rid of anything that requires a DLC. Time now for the final stage of the build, the enrichment items. So we've got a dog ball in, we've got this suspended feeder, which has got some really cool animations on it, again using the path trick there. Uh, we'll put a chew toy in, obviously. And there we go, that's the habitat complete. The only thing left to do is get some paths in so the guests can come in and look at the dingoes. So we're going to use the Australian path for this. Just makes it look like the uh, soil is sort of compacted into a path here. Works really nicely. We'll run this all the way down the front of the habitat. Make sure it's not too close to the barriers so the guests don't clip into it. Remember when the guests viewed the animals, sometimes they step forward off the path. Then if your path is right up against a, a barrier or a rock or something like that, they're liable to clip through it and it doesn't look great. Put some more of these ghost gum trees at the back just to add a bit of depth. That's going to look really nice with these and then the big mountain in the background. And the last thing we'll do is drop in one of these desert trees. They are really beautiful and we'll move a few rocks around to give it somewhere to grow from. You know I can't have plants growing out of rocks in these habitats. And there we go, looking really nice, very happy with this. There's nothing in here that isn't in the building kits. Let's buy some dingoes, get them into the habitat and take a look at our finished building kit build. Okay, maybe the sign's a little bit over the top just to go into a habitat, but I really like it. The red rocks look really nice at the back. The dingoes have got loads of room to run around and the rocks look really nice the way they go down into this ditch and you don't really see them, you just see the rocks, looks really natural. Dingoes certainly seem to be happy running around in it. And all built just with the Australia building kit and one piece from the Africa building kit. I really hope you guys find these useful. When I went to upload the Sloth Bear habitat from San Bernardino Zoo, the franchise version of it wasn't finished because I had to build so much of it in Sandbox because the animals hadn't been released to franchise yet. So I decided to spin it up and just release a few pieces of it. So I called it the Sloth Bear building kit and you guys seem to really like it. And it gave me the idea to make more of them. And I thought I'd try and make one for pretty much every environment. We are missing the poles, but aside from that, pretty much got it covered check the link in the description to go and grab it love to see what you guys make with these kits you can show me on the discord thank you for watching as always have an amazing holiday and i'll see you next saturday for episode 50 of san bernardino zoo